What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Mansonelli's Math Lab. This is like the third or fourth take I'm doing now. This software I'm using to record this uh, screen sharing here is quite annoying. Every time I try to use my Excel shortcuts, it does something funky. Uh, very annoying, so I apologize in advance. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for tuning in. Please share the video, like the video, etc. So one of the things people always ask me is, you know, how do I get, how do I separate myself from the pack? How do I land that first job? One of the things you can do, start familiarizing yourself with inter insurance terminology. Start familiarizing yourself with actuarial concepts. That's how you separate yourself. That's one way, other than the other ways, which are passing exams and becoming proficient in various, uh, various softwares like Excel, VBA, SQL, etc., etc., etc. So this is what we're going to do. Um, making this video about trending. Trending is one of the next topics I want to make videos on. And this is the beginning. Um, what I have here is I have, uh, excuse me, I have quarterly data. As you can see here, um, I have exposures. Um, Exposures, by the way, let me just get into this real quick. Exposure is a way to measure risk. Let's say we're writing personal auto insurance and we want a good exposure base. And I'll define what good means here in a second, but um, <coughs> maybe we want to use miles driven. Okay, miles driven as the exposure base. Now, before I go into that further, let me just tell you the criteria which makes a good exposure base. Number one, the exposure base must must be proportional to losses. If I tell you that our exposure base is going to be miles driven, is that going to be directly proportional to losses? Well, presumably, yes. The more you drive, the more likely you are to get in an accident and incur a loss. Second criteria is that it has to be practical. And one of the things you have to be able to do with a, quote, good exposure base is that you have to be able to measure it. Can we obtain this information? Now, when it comes to miles driven, there's something that's been um, more recently come out with known as telematics, which allows the driver or policyholder to basically um, in input, uh, so put in this device in their car that tracks the miles uh, for them. So that we don't have to worry about them lying to us, right? Because they might tell us they only drive 10,000 miles a year when really they drive 30. So that's kind of the issue, by the way, with miles driven. Unless we're using telematics, it's difficult to have that as an exposure base. So typically we use earned earn carriers, actually, but as earned exposure. So first criteria for a good exposure base must be proportional to losses. Second criteria must be practical, must be objective, must be easy, inexpensive to obtain and verify. Um, the third criteria is that we have to consider the historical precedence. So... If we've been using car years as exposure base for a long time, suddenly we change to miles driven, that could totally be expensive to implement. It could change how our premiums are. It could change a bunch of stuff. So those are the three considerations. If you have the three considerations, by the way, you know those, what makes a good exposure base, that puts you in a leg up, by the way. If you understand, the, if you're familiar, the more familiar you are with the terminology, the better off you will be. So... Just a quick bit on exposures. Claim counts, you know what those are. I mean, you get in an accident, you file a claim. This is how many claims that this XYZ insurance company has incurred so far. Paid losses, how much are we paying on those? What is frequency? This is where I'm getting annoyed with this damn recorder is that uh, I can't go into the Excel formula. So this is the Excel formula, right? It's just taking, uh, it's just taking the quotient. It's just claim counts over exposure right? Uh, severity is, so how do I even get out of this? God damn it. Oh man. Okay, good. Severity is just the losses per claim count. So it's kind of like, sometimes it's called paid on closed. It's kind of like an average, an average severity. Uh, pure premium is the product of, um, frequency and severity. So what are the units on pure premium? This is going to be well, let's see, frequency is claims over exposure, severity is paid over claims, the claims cancel, pure premium is losses, oh, sorry, severity is losses over claims, frequency is claims over exposure, so pure premium is losses over exposure. 
Now what I have down here, this is really the important part when it comes to the Excel formulas you should know going in as an actuarial student, the log S formula. The log S formula, as you can see up here, um, and again, I apologize, I wanna really do more, but I don't want this video to stop. But the log S formula is taking an exponential fit of the data. So here I have a 12 point fit, so I have 12 quarters. Okay, to the fourth power, that makes it annualized. Um, so if this was yearly data, it would just be the power one. If it was monthly data, it would be the power 12, etc., etc. So I have a 12 point, I have an eight point, taking eight points now. And then I have a six point, taking six, six points there, etc. So I have I have a trend or I have a fit for the frequency data here. I have a fit for the severity data and then I have a fit for the pure premium data. And as you can see, hopefully, this is one reason why we split these out is because we want to eventually obtain a pure premium factor. But in order to do that, as, you, as I mentioned before, a pure premium is the, the product of these two. What we can do actually is first get a frequency uh, fit a severity fit, and then add one and then take the product and minus one, and that gives me a pure premium. So I'll get into the details of the, again, again of that. Uh, but basically what I'm getting at here is that looking at these, these, um, these kind of growth factors here, or decay factors, or I guess percentages, they're not factors, but um, they're quite different. So you may wanna select something different for frequency as opposed to severity. And from that we can obtain pure premium. And when we get a pure premium, fit this percentage we'll use that to obtain what's called a loss trend and then we'll apply that to our losses so we can project those to a future date what future date the date in which we are um, projecting all of our expenses losses premiums to aka the effective date aka the date in which we want to implement these new rates a lot going on, I know, I mean, insurance is a lot. I mean, there's a lot going on, so, but I wanna stick to what the point of this video is. The point of this video is not only to show you that we use exponential fits uh, to determine frequency severity trends, which give us pure premium, um, but what the heck is this even doing? So I, have a, I like math, <laughs> and I like to know where things come from, and when I first started, I was always asking myself, what the hell is going on here? And as you probably know, the most frequent, uh, sorry, the most recent exam I took was MAS-1. MAS-1 uh, covers, one of the most relevant topics on the exam is general linear models, aka generalized linear models. This is a generalized linear model. I'm gonna make a video following up on this um, to go into detail about this, but basically we're gonna take a single variable um, linear function. We're gonna apply a log link. Again, I'll go into detail of that. And then to that linear uh, function, and that's gonna give us an exponential fit. So first in this video, I'm just gonna show you that it actually works. And I'm gonna use these formulas right here um, to show you that. So. Uh, again, I mean, there's so much detail to go in here, but I can't go into everything. So what I'm doing here, I've used this Excel formula. I want you to focus here maybe on just severity. Okay, on severity here, this matches this, right? It's exactly the same. Excuse me. Here, this is what we do in practice. We just do the log S, it's an exponential fit. If it's quarterly data, we raise it to the fourth and minus one. The minus one changes it from a factor to just a percentage, increase or decrease. Now what I did over here is I'm utilizing these formulas. So if you look at this array here, this these formulas, oh, I should have written more here, um, but this will force you to watch the next video. Um, these these are actually gonna be parameters in an exponential function. And this is a lot of hand wavy right now, but again, this will force you to watch the next video, is that this B value, this B, this crazy business right here, is exactly what the exponential fit is doing. 
this value, this negative 0.2 uh, percent is the output of this B when I apply it to, in this case, severity. So what am I doing in this array over here? What I'm doing here is I'm taking n, or sorry, I'm taking the natural log of y. y is severity. I'm just looking at severity right now. You can do the exact same exercise with frequency as well as pure premium. But with regards to severity, I'm considering severity is the y value. So all I'm doing here, nothing fancy, I'm taking ln, the natural log of severity. I'm taking, uh, and then I'm just going down the line. I'm going all the way down the line, taking the natural log of all of these severities right here. Why am I doing that? Because that's what the formula tells me to do. It says I need to take the number of points n times the sum of the product of the x's, the ln of the y, minus the sum of the x, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I need ln y in here. Yi, by, by the way, is just a, an index. The i is index for the, the, the data points, right? So here I have 12. So I need to take ln of the y value, uh, aka the predicted value, aka uh, what's the other word? There's a bunch of terminology for that, but um, ln of the output, severity. And then I take x times ln of that, because that's this point right here. And then I have, you know, x squared right here. That's why I have an x squared. So I, I have all these little points right here to use this formula for b, specifically for b. Um, and yeah, so I mean, the equation, by the way, is just y equals, uh, let's see, it's ln a e to the bx. So it's an exponential curve. When you take ln of both sides, though, it turns it into a linear curve with a log link. So it's a generalized linear model. Remember, generalized linear model means the link function is not the identity, uh, and then also the, the error term is not necessarily normally distributed. So I won't go into those details right now, but uh, the main thing is I want to show you in this video that the Excel function, which is log s, can be reproduced using a generalized linear model, uh, specifically with log link. So all I'm doing here, this, and this crazy formula right here, is I'm doing exactly what B is. So this is the 12 point. Here I'm looking at 12 points of data, so all the data. Um, n is the number of points, so that's why I have 12. Forget the four for now. Sum of the blue, so sum of the blue. So I'm summing these, right? X times L and Y. I'm summing the blue uh, minus the sum of the X's, okay, sum of the X's, times the sum of L and Y, that's what this is, right? I'm following this formula. Divided by, don't forget parentheses, okay, 12, right? N, 12 times the sum of the x squared is right there, minus uh, the sum of the x's and then quantity squared. So I'm literally doing that. And it's giving me exactly, oh shoot. What I want, I just broke it. That's all right. I just broke it, that's fine. I, I can't use the keyboard because the freaking recorder will stop, so annoying. But anyways, that was right a second ago. Maybe if I control Z. Okay, good. Now what's the four for? The four is because it's quarterly. I'm not gonna go into the details of that, but maybe you can convince yourself of that. That's gonna annualize uh, the exponential fit for this. It has to do with the properties of E. I don't wanna go into the details, but um, properties of exponents. So anyways, notice, Observation, these are exactly the same as these. So in Excel, we can just use the log s formula. It's easy peasy. If you do get an actual real job, I guarantee you'll be using this a lot. All it's doing is it's taking an exponential curve and it's finding the parameters, the intercept, the y-intercept, as well as the, the exponent of e, the growth. It's fitting it to that curve. So you're minimizing the sum of squares error when you minimize the sum of squares error, which is the sum of quantity y minus the predicted value y bar, uh, sorry, y hat quantity squared, you take some partial derivatives and you're gonna get this. So tune into the next video. I'm gonna go over that. 
uh, where this comes from. I'm going to give you exactly where this comes from. And then you'd be like, bam, not only do I know a little bit about frequency severity trends, but I know where they come from. I know that as an actuary, you use the logist formula to obtain those. I know that I'll never do it in real life, but I could if I wanted to um, find uh, the fitted curve for an exponential curve um, and do it that way. And by the way, if you're studying for either exam MAS1 or either, um, so on the SOA side, probably short-term actuarial models or long-term actuarial models, you're going to have to learn this as well. GLMs, generalized linear models, um, are quite important. All right, hopefully you guys uh, like the video. Um, I want to obviously make more Excel videos and then I want to, there's a way to actually share the file with you guys so you guys can play around with it. Otherwise, try reproducing it. I mean, you guys want to learn Excel, you want to get better at stuff. I, I have people say, you know, I want to learn Excel, but I want to learn how it pertains to the job. This is how you do it. Reproduce this. See if you can reproduce this. Tell me what you think. Um, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time.